Well, good morning, everybody. Or good afternoon, I guess it is. I had the honor of coming back from Boise and with their Boise cold, so I may have to interrupt my speech this morning, but I, I want to welcome you to the University of Idaho community, both here in Moscow and throughout the state. My name is Bill Gosling, and I am a member of the State Board of Education and a region of this great institution. I take pride today in introducing to you the 18th president of the University of Idaho. Chuck Staben joins a long line of accomplished men and women who have led this fine institution for over 125 years. I'm excited that he's here to join us as we move forward to future successes at the University of, of the State, or the founding university. President Chuck Staben is a native of Illinois. He earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana in 1978, his doctor in biochemistry in 1984 from the University of California, Berkeley. He is a married to the Dr. Mary Beth Staben, a physician who is both an internist and a hospitalist. They have two sons and one daughter, both of which are all three of which are working on their degrees at this time. Cap uh, President Staben has shown exceptional ability as an educator, a researcher, and administrator. He has received numerous teaching awards as well as grants from National Science Foundation, National Institute of Health and other agencies. He has also served as re on review panels for these agencies. Further, he recently served at the National Research Council Committee that reviewed EPSCOR, one of our major programs here, and was uh, in institutional development awards for the U.S. Senate. So he has not only state recognition, but he has an international and national recognition. He has a long track record of helping organizations achieve their goals. This has been especially true in his last position as provost and vice president of academics affairs at the University of South Dakota, in which he was there since 2008. There, his efforts have led to well-documented increases in retention, or excuse me, enrollment, retention, graduation rate, and funding. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce the 18th president of the University of Idaho, Dr. Chuck Staben. Thanks, Bill, and thanks all of you for coming today. Well, I'm pleased and honored to become, after what seems quite a long time since the November announcement in this very room, president here at the University of Idaho. I was attracted here by the university's academic rep reputation and by the opportunities that I see here. My wife, Mary Beth, and I think that Moscow will be a great place to set down roots together after five and a half very long years apart while I worked in South Dakota. Idaho is a beautiful state, and I can simply feel that this will be a great place to work, and I know that Mary Beth shares that feeling as well. <clears throat> the first thing we, should, we all should do is to thank Don Burnett for his leadership, for his service to the university. Don. I think it's evident that Don has a very deep love of Idaho and of the university. We are still working together in our transition, and I want to thank him very personally for his generosity to me, but also I think that we all should thank him because his leadership has really lifted the spirit of this university. I know that you'd like me to share some of my initial observations of the university and of the state. As you listen to these observations, please understand that these are initial and not exhaustive observations. If you don't hear about your program or your group, please don't take offense, just resolve to tell me about it. <laughs> Most importantly, our students, faculty, staff, and alumni are passionate about the U of I. There is an incredibly strong vandal spirit. That passion was evident for me at the 125th anniversary celebration that I attended, and I've seen it in alumni meetings, in emails, in discussions with faculty, really just everywhere that I go. It won't also surprise you to know that the U of I has smart, capable, engaged students. I've already enjoyed working with Max Cowan, the ASUI president, Ivar Gunderson of the Student Bar Association, and Kate Cobb from the Graduate and Professional Student Association. And I look forward to working with students very closely. U of I faculty are conducting world-class research. 
I knew of, their bio, of the bioinformatics and evolutionary biology work from my interactions with people from Idaho via the INBRI uh, grant that Idaho has and, and that I was active in while I was at the University of Kentucky. And I know that we have other great programs in many of our colleges. I'm sure you'll tell me the stories that I don't yet know. <clears throat> I also can't wait to hear more about the transformative experiences that occur daily in our classrooms and on our campus. I was already aware of some, such as the integrated business curriculum, and I visited the Polya Lab recently, hearing about their great work in math education. <clears throat> the University of Idaho has wonderful faculty and staff who care deeply about the university and its students. I've met several times with Senate and Staff Affairs Committee leadership, and I look forward to working with them as well. U of I benefits from great external partnerships with K-12 systems, with higher education partners such as our sister universities and the WAMI collaboration, with Idaho National Laboratory, with agricultural groups, with the Albertson Foundation as an example, and the community of Moscow itself. These are all just examples. I know that the U of I has over 70 sites throughout the state. I recently visited Kane, Caldwell, and Parma during my January vis visits. In fact, I had some great apples that I believe were bred at one of those sites. Um, and of course, I saw the Coeur d'Alene, Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Boise Centers during my interview, and I've been a back to the Water Center several times already. This network offers enormous potential for impact across this entire state. I've enjoyed cultural events. I went to Chinese New Year on a visit here, and, and I got to the World Class Jazz Festival just recently. I was fortunate to arrive on Saturday this last week, and we can be proud not just of the incredible music at the festival, but the impact that that festival had on thousands of young students. I've also gotten to enjoy two women's basketball games, even getting to see them win the Western Athletic Conference. I, I think they, that we hadn't won a conference cha championship like that since 1984, so that's a pretty special occurrence. Um, I'm sorry that I missed the track championship the other day, but I'm looking forward to watching our Vandals compete. I've met wonderful, warm people who have welcomed me and who I know will welcome my wife, Mary Beth. I've been awed by the beauty of the state, from the fall colors on my November visit when we drove from Moscow to Boise to the gently falling snow that I've gotten to experience this month. <coughs> the, the, the weather is much better here than in South Dakota, by the way. Uh, I worked out at the Student Rec Center yesterday, a great facility and very friendly staff. And I also understand that at least one student has taken me up on my racquetball challenge. So I'm looking forward to sharing more of these academic, cultural, athletic, and recreational activities with all of you. But I also want to hear more from you. I want to know as much as I can about what makes the U of I special to each of you. So um, having said these nice things, I think we all recognize that the university faces challenges, some of long standing, and I wanted to to discuss them a bit. I know you've seen multiple years of budget challenges here. Restricted, restricted budgets have caused difficulty offering competitive salaries and in building the programs that we desire. As you know, the revenue budget has several major components, tuition, state appropriations, extramural grants, and donations. I will work with everyone at the university to maximize our resources and to use them optimally. I'd like to mention salaries specifically. One cannot buy the loyalty of highly motivated, dedicated people like yourselves. Unfortunately, however, an employee can become discouraged or feel treated unfairly when pay slips behind appropriate comparisons and there's little prospect of improvement. So I want to emphasize how much I appreciate the loyalty of our faculty and staff, but also that with your help in revenue generation and in the efficient use of resources, we will make strong and I believe effective efforts to ensure improved compensation. Tuition cost has increased considerably at most public universities, including Idaho in the last five to 10 years. This places a financial burden on students and families. I credit the students who have shouldered increased cost and state clearly that the university appreciates the support of the students who recognize the value that a U of I education represents and have accepted these increases. Nevertheless, access and affordability are critical to our mission as a public university. I will be working hard with my budget and enrollment staff to, capitalize, to optimize the use of our resources, including the considerable resources that our donors have made available, so that all qualified, motivated students can benefit from the educational quality that is the hallmark of our university. 
So let me tell you a little bit about what you can expect from me in the short term and some, and some nearer term objectives. First, you may hear me talk quite often about resources, but I want to state very clearly that the University of Idaho is not a business. Resources, however, are e essential to, for us to affect our mission. We will not seek revenue for revenue's sake, but we will seek revenue opportunities consistent with our mission so that we can be more effective in what is most valuable to us. I'd like to also comment on declining public financial support for the university and for universities across the nation. This, dis de this decline doesn't mean that the public or government does not understand the importance of education, nor does this change the importance of our mission. We must make clear that higher education is an investment, not an expense. This is as true in terms of the public good as in terms of personal benefit. I will advocate strongly for higher education with state government, with our supporters and friends, and with students and families. Please continue to arm me with the successes that will make clear just how valuable an investment the University of Idaho represents. The State Board of Education, Idaho business leaders, and private foundations have announced very ambitious goals for degree attainment, 60% post-secondary degrees, including a large increase in bachelor's degrees and advanced degrees. I expect the U of I to march behind this banner. We will play our part in educating students, and we will also educate the teachers and school administrators who will prepare Idaho K-12 students for success in post-secondary education. Emma Atchley, state board member, said at the meeting last week that students drop out of college in the eighth grade. And a great deal of national research supports this. Idaho cannot afford this, and the University of Idaho cannot afford this. We are bringing our own research capability to bear on why students do not attend college and how we can prepare students more effectively. We will work together with all Idaho st stakeholders to achieve this goal. These issues all together lead to a continuing focus on enrollment on the Moscow campus with attention to access, quality, and diversity. You will see strong and focused efforts to recruit students from, I from Idaho, from other states, and internationally. The U of I will continue outreach to first-generation college students and to underserved populations. I invite your ideas on how we can do all of this even more effectively. Our successful Inspiring Futures campaign, and we've reached 95% of our goal, will provide resources that will aid us in addressing student need as well as in attracting academically meritorious students. Special thanks to our extremely generous donors and also to Chris Murray, Vice President for Advancement, to our deans, and to the advancement staff for their efforts. We will embrace our statewide mission in education as we have embraced our statewide mission in engagement. I ask that we develop a distance learning strategy, including the roles that our centers can play. I will invite your input on how to ensure that our distance efforts meet the state's needs, our students' needs, our standards for quality, and that these programs are consistent with our culture. We are a great public research land-grant university. In that tradition, we will excel in research and engagement even as we face challenges in funding at the federal level. As you have been doing, we will continue to seek opportunities where our excellence can have impact, basic research or applied. I can see opportunities for the U of I to extend our NIH-funded biomedical research to further develop areas of excellence such like fire science and to assist the state in critical un industries like the dairy industry. I will work closely with Vice President McIver as well as our colleges in further developing high impact research and engagement. We will shortly conclude the focus for the future proce process and I think special thanks should go to Provost and Executive Vice President Catherine Aiken for her leadership on this. Thanks to many others who, are, who have also been involved. Prioritization processes are difficult but they can provide direction and resources to ensure that we remain focused on that which is most important to us. I want to emphasize that even as I begin to work, I remain in learning and listening mode with plans to connect with the campus and to connect statewide before beginning major initiatives. So I want your input on, how, on the directions we should move. I plan to be out in the university community and statewide. We've scheduled my first racquetball challenge match with a student, but even if you don't play racquetball, <clears throat> open office hours will be posted on the web, and you will see me at the student rec center, as I said, or in a coffee shop, and I hope that you'll speak with me informally. So a lot of what I've said today is abstract and perhaps a little formal and a little dry, uh, and so what I'd like to close with is 
a story about the personal impact than a university can have, and this is what I think means most to me and probably most to all of you. Universities change lives in extraordinary ways. I don't yet have the Idaho stories like those shared by Don Burnett. I'd like to hear those stories, and I know that I will because I know that the University of Idaho has changed the lives of so many. For today, though, I would like to offer the story of a friend that I met in South Dakota. I had dinner with him in Rapid City on my way out to Idaho. Uh, Jason Murray is from Oklahoma, a Choctaw Chickasaw uh, uh, Native American. He went to work in the oil fields after high school. One day at work, he almost caused an accident that would have hurt or killed one of his brothers, and Jason decided to change his life. He really did not know what he should do, but he enrolled at the local community college. <clears throat> Jason had no idea how to succeed in school, and he did poorly his first semester. He registered late for his second semester and was advised it would be his last if he did not do better. Because he registered late, there was only one open English class, a poetry class. He had never read poetry, and he didn't read these poems, so he wasn't doing very well. Some of in the audience can empathize, I gather. His instructor chanced upon him in the hall about a half hour before class and reminded him that he was to analyze Crossing Brooklyn Ferry by Walt Whitman in the next class. Jason decided he'd better read the poem. We've probably all been there. <clears throat> the poem's message of the shared human experience struck him so hard that not only could he share this impact with the class and therefore provide a successful analysis, but he could also now appreciate how learning could improve his life not just in terms of a, of a profession, but in a rich philosophical way. Jason persisted, and he eventually earned his PhD in English at the University of South Dakota, where I met him. We hired Jason to run USD's Indian University of North America program at the Crazy Horse Memorial. He now works directly for the memorial. Jason runs a summer program for students entering college, primarily young Native Americans and first-generation students, students like himself. He's touching the lives of people, and they are succeeding in part because of his efforts and his success. I want to hear these stories about the University of Idaho, but even more importantly, I want to help you as students to have those experiences, and you as faculty, staff, alumni, or community members to make those kinds of differences. I'm deeply honored to be here, and I'm deeply committed to being here. Thanks so much for your attention. Go Vandals.
water? Okay.